Pleasant morning to members of the media and welcome to the Trinidad Tobago Police Service weekly media briefing for Wednesday, 18th September 2019. I am Wayne Meister, Public Information Officer of the TTPS. This morning we are going to highlight some issues as it relates to fraudulent offences. And together with me on the press briefing, I have uh, Superintendent Kurt Simon, who is the superintendent in charge of the, the fraud squad. So he's going to give us some information. He's going to apprise us also about some safety tips as it relates to fraudulent activities. Sir Simon. Uh, good morning. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to the lit listenership. Uh, fraud, you know, it, it is in an offense that uh, whilst uh, it's hardly being talked about, and I mean in comparison to blue-collar crime, uh, it is one that... Uh, is affecting our our twin island state in a manner that could uh, put us in a place where we probably wouldn't want to be. And I'm talking about the the, the economics of the thing, not just the the, the the act, the criminal act of fraud of fraud. Now, uh, just before I, I go into to what the fraud squad is and what and what we do there, I just want to uh, eliminate your minds, perhaps on some of the the types of fraud or the amount of fraud that, that we tend to encounter the fraud squad. Uh, just for 2019, sorry, uh, we have had just the general reports. Eh? I'm not talking about the ABM matters. The general reports, we have had 467 reports. I mean, uh, fraud when compared to, to even our blue collar um, associates, that is the, the robberies and the murders, tend to be a bit higher than, than those reports. Um, we look at the, the ABM reports also. That is where you have the ABM card frauds. Uh, I think uh, last week there were some events taking place with it on social media, so most persons would have been aware of, of certain things happening with the, in the ABM department. And these reports tend to be staggering yearly. Uh, so far, for this year, we have uh, 664 reports of ABM card frauds. Uh, it's amounting to for over $4.5 million in losses. Uh, and again, when you compare this to the, to the blue-collar arena, you find that uh, the, the, the fraud, the monetary value is a bit astounding. And uh, as a public, uh, we should be aware of what uh, we are dealing with. And when we compare it even to last year, the figures are, are very similar. Um, Saying that, uh, there are a number of things that we are at the Fraud Squad we are doing to, to counter these, these fraudulent activities, and I'll perhaps go into that a little later in, in this discussion. Um, general fraud reports for, for this year has amounted to, to 555. Uh, at the Fraud Squad, for this year, we have charged uh, 59 persons. And whilst that may look like a, a small amount of individuals charged, the actual amount of cases laid, though, amongst 140 cases laid. So you'd find that uh, when, when we detect a fraud offense and, and arrest an individual, the individual tend to be responsible not only for, for an individual uh, incident. Uh, I, would, I just want to, to go in somewhat into the fraud squad, who we are. Uh, we are a unit created in, since uh, 1965 with a mandate to investigate uh, complex fraud events and to bring the perpetrators to justice. Uh, basically, that's, what, that's who we are. That's what we do. We are located at uh, the corner of, of Park and Richmond Street. That's our Port of Spain office. Our San Fernando office is uh, located at the corner of Shakan and Monshagrin Street in, in San Fernando. Uh, those two offices are responsible for all fraud-related matters in our beautiful Twin Island state of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we, we encounter reports such as uh, fraudulent conversion larcenies, that's serious larcenies amounting to, to several thousands, even millions of dollars. We, do, we deal with reports involving falsification of accounts, we, we look at the, the ABM fraud, so our, our spectrum is wide. We look at falsification of deeds, uh, forging of deeds, forging of driving permits, birth certificates, anything that is fraud. And just for 
just to briefly educate you, fraud really is is that act that seeks to to put one in a in a in an advantageous position either materially or even uh even in, in terms of being at a at a certain place. I mean I say a certain place, a certain stature to, to get probably perhaps a job. People use fraudulent activities even to get jobs and, and so on. So there's where you find job letters and, and false educational certificates, they tend to come in into that arena and we investigate all of all of those things. Um, we have uh, some highlights that I would like to, to, to share with you. And when I say highlights, I mean some of the accomplishments that we have had this year so far. Um, I don't know, you may recall the unit trust incident where we, we, we charged a number of persons for attempting to, to fraudulently defraud the unit trust of Trinidad and Tobago of large sums of money, and it in also included uh, persons attempting to defraud and was connected to, to a double murder incident in, in Tobago. We worked closely with the homicide department on that one, and we, bring it, we brought it to, well, not to closure because we, the investigation is still ongoing, but we, we, we have reached a, 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 an advanced state in the investigations, aside from the charges are, are laid. And only recently, we assisted the Aruka police and uh, with charging an individual up there for possession of counterfeit currency. And, uh, you, you, and you would see that fraud, it directly impacts our economy. Counterfeit currency could uh, damage uh, what, what our value, our mon monetary values, and this is something that we must be careful about and the fraud squad. Uh, we, we look at it very seriously, and these offenses, we approach them with, with, with vigor. Uh, we have also assisted uh, the COVA, that is the central police, with, with an arrest uh, last week. Last week, yes, uh, with persons with fraudulent driving permits, fraudulent deeds, and, and all these sort of things. And, and the, 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 the amount of the, the copies that these persons would have, it, it is alarming as to where we, we are really going, where, where persons with the, where our criminal element, how they are thinking and what it is they are probably trying to, to do in terms of our fraud. Um, interestingly enough, in responding to, to this ABM threat, we have created a, an ABM task force at the fraud squad. Uh, this is a, a very strategic move, we, we, we think, in trying to combat this crime. Uh, even just up to last night, we, we made an arrest, a significant arrest, I would say. We arrested eight persons, seven of them being uh, Venezuelans, one local. Uh, this arrest occurred in the St. Augustine uh, Police District. Uh, these persons were, were observed tampering with an ABM machine in a popular mall in East Trinidad. And uh, from the arrest and, and search of premises and so on, we were able to to get a number of what appears to be uh, counterfeit ABM cards amounting to, to over a hundred of them. And when you look at that figure, using those amount of cards, you can use it throughout Trinidad Tobago and persons can become very enriched in a short space of time. I think uh, that is the whole basis of fraud, that it, is, it can be very accommodating and very tempting and perhaps very easy to perpetrate and the, the, the offense tends to look victimless at times. Uh, we have also found a number of gadgets with these individuals that would aid and assist them in perpetrating the crimes. Uh, however, these gadgets are, they are well catered for in our, in our laws and uh, we are proceeding with our inquiries right now as I speak, the view of bringing it all together to closure to have these persons be taken before a court of competent jurisdiction. Um, Whilst we, we are that, um, I just want to educate the people of this country that, um, you know, so that you can feel confident in your fraud squad. We have a, a unit there where we, are, we, have, we have constant training. We are trained in, in, in fraud investigations and interviewing skills, cybercrime investigations, document examination, counterfeit currency detection, and we do a lot of lectures and outreach programs with, with different uh, businesses. We, we are the banks regularly, insurance companies. We do a lot of fair, 
fraud awareness training with these uh, with these institutions. So your fraud squad, they are, are, are building capacity daily so that we can react to our situations, the ongoing situations in Trinidad and Tobago as the crime trends keep changing. The fraud squad, we are trying, we are not just keeping our pace, but we are thinking forward in, in reacting and uh, perhaps not just reacting, but, but preventing crime. That is one of our, one of our uh, uh, touchy subjects right now in the fraud squad, how, how much more we can add to the prevention of crime landscape. And we, we actually have a, a fraud prevention plan uh, being written up right now, but mostly completed, just to, just to deal with, with, with our um, issues that we are experiencing in Trinidad and Tobago. Another thing that we are doing, we, we have taken on uh, 17 uh, inductees into the fraud squad. They, they have undergone uh, a period of about three months training, classroom and practical. As we speak right now, they are in a classroom session and we are preparing these young officers to come out here and join in the prevention and the fight against crime, Be, mainly, of course, in our arena, fraud. Uh, I don't know, I would like to take this opportunity perhaps to, to tell you about some of the, the types of uh, crimes, that, fraud that we have, and, and perhaps give you some, some tips as to how to perhaps uh, guard yourself from becoming a, a victim of fraud. When we think about the credit card and debit card fraud, and that is very prevalent, and th this fits the, the description of what was occurring last week on social media, I just want to advise uh, our our citizenry to, to perhaps be aware of your surroundings and uh, ensure that your transactions, they are kept private. Do not reveal your PIN to anyone. And I think that this is a, a, a request that we make, an advice that we give daily, and one that probably should be now termed common. Always use an ATM where there is high volume of traffic. Uh, I spoke a while ago about an ATM in a, in a mall in the east of Trinidad, and Whilst the mall itself might be popular and will be populated, you find that the, the machine itself might be in a secluded area in this popular, populated area of the mo in the mall. And uh, we just want to advise you to, to be aware of, of those sort of areas where you're doing your transactions. Always look out for persons who are standing at the ATM too long and fidgeting. Perhaps they might be the ones who are putting in gadgets or at that time removing them. If they're removing them, chances are they would have already captured your card information and just to duplicate the card and, and interfere with your accounts. Uh, do not con conduct transactions where you cannot see your card. Again, we, we, we keep advising our public on this. Always request a valid form of pity identification from customers when you're conducting transactions. And of course, that's for the business uh, persons. Uh, we have incidents, a lot of incidents of fraudulent uh, checks. Um, this is another another area that the fraud squad we are we are doing some some serious uh, covert work on right now because we want to bring that to some sort of conclusion and i'm um, sure the public if you remain tuned you would you would hear us commenting on, on our breakthroughs in, in those areas but um just for your own protection i want to advise that you you always clear your checks with you in banks before parting with your goods uh, this could be a difficult prospect. I know businesses, business owners, you tend to be excited when you conduct a transaction where the money, the monetary value looks, looks very uh, encouraging. But however, you may be giving away your goods without receiving any cash. Always request two forms of picture ID from persons effecting payment with your manager's check. As far as practicable, ob obtain a vehicle number and telephone contact. And as far as practicable, make copies of the identification cards. Uh, these last two points uh, tend to assist in the investigation. Sorry to say, that is when you probably would have already been taken. Uh, the dishonored checks. This is another prevalent area of um, fraud in the country. And, um, you know, it is an area that, that, that is of much concern to us because it, it, it tends to... To, to limit the businessman's uh, ability, it tends to, to limit, his, limit his confidence 
in dealing with, with checks, when persons are given checks out for goods and services, and even though the accounts do exist, they know very well that the accounts cannot support what the checks are claiming. So I just want to advise persons, as far as practicable, clear the checks before parting with your goods. Perhaps you can uh, complete this by, by making some sort of prearrangement. The person wants some goods, let them bring the check earlier than the goods, the goods are supposed to be released. Because uh, surely, if they, if they do not receive any goods, they have nothing to lose. But you are the one who would lose if you should part with your goods and realize that the, 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 the check has bounced, so to speak. This is what we call a dishonored check. It is advisable to, to only accept checks from persons known to you or who are regular customers. And, you know, even in this area, we are having problems. Persons who you know, doing business with, they tend to, to give you a check that from time to time it bounces and still remain giving trouble even to pay up when they realize that they have found themselves in some difficulty. Uh, as far as it's possible, uh, place some identification marks on your goods. Uh, this helps us in the investigative stage so that uh, your goods can be properly identified by you so that we can say, yes, this is the item that you would have parted with so we can probably effect a, a proper charge in the matter. Uh, if you are dissatisfied with the product received, you have three working days in which to return the goods and inform the seller. So this is for the persons who, are, who would have um, given over a check and find that they, they are having problems even with the goods. Uh, phishing and identity theft, another popular area in the fraud arena. And uh, in, this, in this area, persons are being, and uh, this is my opinion, persons seem to be being too easily duped, too easily convinced of uh, parting with, with their money online from dealing with, with individuals, persons claiming to be some an institution or a well-intended persons. Person, sorry. Um, and you know, this phishing and, and identity theft, it's going a little further now. And I, I just want to send out a, a plea, and I'm glad I, I have this arena to, to, to use, to send it, particularly to, to women. Uh, a number of women are coming to our departments, that is both the South and the Port of Spain office, and are uh, uh, complaining that they are meeting male persons online. And for some reason, they are, they are becoming, uh, should I say, um, intimate. But how, I don't know how you can become intimate online, but what might be the term for that? We probably have to invent one. But um, persons are becoming intimate online. And then women are being promised things, goods. And I'm talking about the most frequent one is women are being promised um, to be married, that the man is going to marry you. And the, he is showing you pictures of wedding dress, rings, shoes, even pictures of dresses for the bridesmaids and sending it to you in a package. And the women are very happy. They began making wedding plans. And then they are told, look, the, there's a problem with the, with the goods being held up at a certain place. And if they can send a certain amount of cash to clear the goods, and they are sending the cash, sometimes up to $40,000, to get their wedding dresses, only to realize that it, the whole thing was a farce. And uh, this, I realize that uh, the women are coming in, they are very emotionally distraught, distressed by this. And I just want to warn you, women especially, please try and avoid being taken online. And uh, that was just, uh, I, I'm glad, as I said, I, I can give that caveat there with regards to fishing. But um, the more um, traditional type fishing, the, the, the advice for that, uh, do not respond to advertisements uh, requesting personal information before verifying their authenticity. And this, this could be somewhat challenging, but um, most persons now, we, we, we tend to be very literate on the computer and, and know how to, to, to verify uh, persons, so we, sh we should use it. Um, what we have recognized is that um, persons who are using the, 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 the computer to do, to do your business transactions, uh, you are being duped by sending monies to, to a, a, um, an email address that looks quite familiar to the one that you are dealing with. 
So I give an example. I use myself. Uh, you may be sending monies to, let's say, Kurt Simon Forte at ms.com. And here it is. You get an email now from Kurt Simon at ms.com requesting a payment. And you are not, you're not reading the address properly because it looks very, very similar. It's just something has been left out. And you send your money thinking that you have sent me payment for something when you have not. You have sent your money to some other address and you have lost your money. Uh, the investigations into these sort of reports, they are very complex simply because they usually are uh, committed by, by persons who are operating in different countries. I've seen it. We, we have traced uh, some of these places to be in France, Nigeria, and perhaps as close as Jamaica. So uh, for, most, for most times, when you are caught up in, in this sort of scenario, you operate, you will lose. The crime itself is very difficult to pursue and even to bring anyone to justice. Uh, do not disclose information, such as your date of birth, and we have to keep repeating this. Persons are, are doing it still. Doing it on the phone or even online. They are dis disclosing pertinent and sensitive information that, that allows you to become uh, an open victim. So your, your, your date of birth, your PIN, and other financial information that would assist the perpetrator in, in accessing your account. Please desist from giving them on the phone or online. These things should be done and can be done personally and individually. Again, another aspect of fraud that is engaging our attention and that comes to our department quite regularly is that of land fraud. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing, really, as to how easily persons are taken in, in land fraud. And I, I think that um, we need to be a little more vigilant and we need to be a little more sensitive to, to what it is, to, the, to where we are living and what we are experiencing in our economy. I mean, land in Trinidad is never cheap. And yet, persons are responding to cheap land deal offers. I'm speaking about things where you get $250,000 off and so on on a lot of land. And you, because you see a deed and you, you know, we like a good deal and we, we grasp at it. And before you know it, we are out a couple millions. We are dealing with a report, with some reports right now that amounts to about $2.5 million with, with 14 transactions. So th this, it is really ridiculous, but um, it is what exists in Trinidad and Tobago. And again, uh, sometimes we may be making ourselves too available to becoming uh, victims in these, in these issues. So please uh, engage the services of a rep reputable attorney at law before proceeding on any property transaction. And I, I want to stress that word reputable because uh, deeds are, are, are perhaps generated by attorneys and then they are registered at the Registrar General Office. But um, when you, when you, perhaps when you see a deed that is with an attorney's name on it, you may, be, you may be easily convinced that it's a good deed. Please do your own basic research a certain who is this attorney? Sometimes the attorney does not really exist. Sometimes an attorney who have matters before the court, or it's an attorney who no one else deals with. Do your due diligence. Uh, ensure that the seller is a lawful, the lawful owner of property. And again, uh, you know, we have seen instances where persons come, the, the, the persons who we interact with, who we may arrest in perpetrating these sort of crimes. Just looking at their appearance alone, you will know this person cannot own property. But yet, you know, because I guess because of the price that is being offered, we succumb and, and, and we, we, we part with our monies. So please be careful. Uh, again, uh, very, verify any protocol of deeds with the Office of the Registrar of General. Be wary of persons selling land property for cash. Be wary of persons selling land property for cash. When we are dealing with these large amounts, perhaps your paper trail is better. It tends to delay the matter just by using checks. And perhaps during that time of delay, you may very well recognize that the land that you are attempting to purchase does not really exist, and you can put a stop payment on your check. Always seek the proper forms of identification from the seller 
and do not proceed with transactions if you have any suspicion about the property or the seller. We have a lot of instances with persons buying swamp land from individuals who are doing the deal in, in, in a sleeveless and have rubber slippers on their feet. Come on. Vehicle transactions. This is an interesting area, and it remains so. Uh, only a week before, we would have charged uh, an ex-police officer for a number of vehicle transactions where he is purporting to be selling individuals' vehicles, purporting to be a used car, foreign used car salesman, and selling these vehicles. Uh, there are other persons indulged in, the, in, the, in, in this similar sort of uh, offense. And uh, we, have a, we have set up a particular, a special unit, so to speak, our cold case squad at the fraud squad, who are dealing directly with these reports so that we can we have identified a number of persons who are in the, who are involved in, in these sort of in this nefarious uh, activity and we are going to arrest you soon enough if you know yourself perhaps i can advise you now to to come in and and, and perhaps surrender if you have not all if you are not in a position to even repay the persons who you are who you have fleeced their monies so people who are getting involved in, in used car, foreign news, especially transactions, I want to implore you to ensure that the seller is a registered owner of the vehicle. Registered owner of the vehicle. And this is a, a perennial problem that we are having in that a number of vehicles are being sold, and I'm talking about just the normal second-hand vehicles, by persons who have not gotten, who have not changed their, their name, who have not put their name on the, on the certified copy. And you find that persons, someone may, may entice you and tell you, well, they will always be able to get that for you. And by the time you have made the transaction, believing them, you, you realize that you, that previous owner probably does not exist. You cannot be found, and you are stuck with a vehicle where you cannot get, you have paid for the vehicle. You might even get it, you know, but you are unable to transfer that vehicle onto your name. So be, be wary of that. I conduct searches on vehicles to ensure that the vehicle is not encumbered to any financial institution. I, uh, I am aware that the, the, the licensing department they have made it uh, quite easy for persons to, to examine vehicle numbers on, online, and perhaps you can, you can investigate that area. In the case of persons offering vehicles for sale on the port, confirm it customs and excise that the vehicle is in fact the vehicle, in fact, exists. I know some persons may find that uh, this is just too much for them to do, but really, it is not a difficult exercise. It's just a request to be made so that you, you, you will know whether or not the, that, that vehicle that this person is talking about that he says is on the port is there. So, so you would not be buying wind from the port. As far as practicable, inspect the vehicle. In case of foreign news vehicles, obtain a photograph of the vehicle. Engine and chassis numbers, yes and the name of the foreign supplier. You have a lot of work to do when you're buying your foreign used vehicles. Verify that the foreign supplier does in fact exist because parting with your cash <laughs> can, can cause you to be in some distress. As far as practicable, verify whether the seller and foreign suppliers have a business relationship. We live in the digital world now. The cyberspace is very wide. The information is out there, so a lot of these things can be easily investigated. Uh, this, uh, this perhaps brings to an end some of the information I would want to share with you. I don't know if anyone has any questions that perhaps so we can elaborate on any point that I've made. Okay, thank you very much, Superintendent Simon. Before we um, engage in any questions, I just want to apprise the members of the public um, of our traffic restrictions on Tuesday, 24th September, Republic Day. Um, that is the day that we will be having our national awards function. So just be minded. Traffic restrictions will be implemented from 2 p.m. till 11 p.m. on the 24th of September, September 2019. And a parking will be prohibited on the following areas. Queen's Park West, between Queen's Park East and Dundonald Street, Keith Street, between Charlotte Street and Chancery Lane. Gordon Street, between Charlotte Street and Dundonald Street. Frederick Street, between Gordon Street and Queen's Park West. Abercrombie Street, 
between Gordon and Keith Street, Pembroke Street between Gordon Street and Keith Street, and on Chancel Lane. So parking will be prohibited in those areas just mentioned. Road closure between 2 p.m. and 11 p.m. on that set date will be on Frederick Street between Queen's Park West and Gordon Street, Keith Street between Charlotte Street and Chancery Lane, and Pembroke Street between Gordon Street and Keith Street. Vehicular diversion on that set date between 2 p.m. till 11 p.m. Motorists proceeding south on Charlotte Street may turn west onto Gordon Street, and motorists proceeding north along Henry Street shall turn west along Gordon Street. So members of the public, please be apprised of these traffic restrictions that will be from the hours between 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Republic Day, Tuesday, 24th September 2019. And that is to facilitate the National Awards function, which starts at 6 p.m.